Well, all right, Jade, you mentioned the DREAM Act. Uh, the DREAM Act is on the shelf. Um, it passed in the House. It got shelved in the Senate. Um, you know, it seems to me, I don't know, like this is not the optimum moment for this to even be uh, up for grabs. It's the lame duck. There's a million other things going on. There's a lot of the things going on. The economy is going over the cliff. Yeah. The, obviously, the calculus is the opportunities are better now than they will be in the Republican Congress. Is that it? Uh, perhaps, but, uh, I mean... I kind of connected to what we were talking about before. There are so many other things going on. There's just, I mean, there's people are bombarded with, uh, with information about the new things and the way the system should change. I think that's what the the true uh, the uh, um, topic is on everyone's mind. That's what I see on Facebook constantly. Is how are things going to change? Uh, people are looking to 2012. I mean, when it comes to I get I have this like email group that uh, for the Latino leaders and the Latino activists. So I get like the Latino perspective like every morning blasted into my email box, and and I, I just see so many other things other than Latino issues coming from these particular groups. So if oh. you, just the Latino activists are being bombarded with all these other American issues, I mean these things are just going to fall to the wayside. Yeah, look, I, I got to tell you, and I, I will probably disagree on this. Um, the DREAM Act is a carefully crafted, uh, dressed-up, miniature version of amnesty. It's just amnesty targeted mm -hmm. at a group of people who are very appealing. I mean, their stories are very appealing. You you look at a young person who wants to go to college, who's, who's had a good life, and, and who wouldn't want them to be Americans? But still, at, at the, at, when you strip it away, you're talking about adding um, – you're adding millions of people uh, to a college system that is broke, giving them uh, tuition breaks at a time when the college systems in many states are bankrupt. Uh, you're talking about, um, uh, you know, putting another bulge in the demographic curve as far as entitlements, because now that you've given amnesty to these millions of people, eventually they come online for entitlements and benefits. Um, I, when you present one person's story to me, I'm very sympathetic to that. Of when course. you tell me it's two million people, I think we have a problem there. Yeah, of course, of course, and 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 there, there's just this, this is uh, this whole thing is just such a mess. It's such a mess, and and to to take it apart and just you know give uh, priorities or uh, privileges to just a certain group of people, it's automatically unfair. Uh, and I think. But see, if you say that, if anyone says it, they think you're automatically anti-Latino, which is not fair. That is not fair. Right, right. That 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 argument is not fair. Right, exactly. Uh, but it it, it it's you just get a, a big sense mess. of manipulation, though. I Absolutely, mean, yeah. because even, no, you even know, every you talk side about, from yeah. every side. And well, it speak it speaks to the problem is that we keep trying to solve these problems in little segmented incremental and like ways, that. and it's yeah. like cooking, folks. And that's my analogy. You can't just keep adding. Well, let's add a little pinch of this because I like that, or let's add a little pinch of that because I like that. Well, guess what? Whatever you started out to cook and you add all those pinches that's not what you're going to get right and right it's the same issue here whether it's the dream mac whether it's these tax rates whether you know pick it it's just the same deal again and again and so the other part of it is we never figure out until it's too late what the unintended consequences are and i would maintain that half of the problems we have not maybe more than that are the unintended consequences dial back to the community reinvestment act we want to increase home ownership among those in the lower end of the spectrum nice good thing except the unintended consequence was now all of a sudden they went out and gave it a loan to everybody with a pulse okay exactly. but nobody thought about that they relaxed all the underwriting standards so you know now somebody with a credit rating of negative six can get a get a loan for a five million dollar house i know that's an exaggeration and then they can't pay the mortgage and now the whole house of cards falls down it's this incrementalism and this segmentation that we seem to be on that's causing the whole problem Right, and it's a tug of war between the people who are trying to make the law, the laws, and, and present these, these these proposals to fix these problems. And, and the thing is, we need to focus on a couple of things, folks. Let's lose this whole idea of fairness, okay? Because what's fair for Ken, or what's fair for Jack, or what's fair for Robert is not fair for you. But what's equitable, we can pretty much agree on what's equitable because it's equal. It's right. equal treatment. Right. So let's get rid of this whole idea. We need to be fair because. 
Life know, is not fair. Life ain't <laughs> fair is exactly correct. It's that's that's one of my favorite lines from a very good movie. <laughs> it's true. Oh, whoever said life was fair. <laughs> they were a liar. Yeah. Well, and, and so here's what I think has happened in a way. Um, this thing is probably going to stall. Um, and w- now we are even further away from the approach that, uh, that Robert, you're advocating, which mm-hmm. is, hey, you got to take a holistic approach. You know, last year we were talking about border security, but we haven't done anything about it. Last year we were talking about the Arizona law, which a lot of people hate, but it was a response to a, a lack of action, a feeling that we were losing control of our borders. Still no action on that. Again, we had this very angry election, but apparently not angry enough. Uh, and, and now they come back to us with this very manipulative, uh, I mean, calling it the DREAM Act. Ken, I mean, could you lay the frosting on any thicker? Oh, no, I, I, mean, it, I think it's, I think that part Yeah, of it how, is, can, how can you deny some poor student who is, who is here yeah. by no fault of their own, how can you deny them the opportunity? Okay, well, I mean, these are all Yeah, which, of course, never things. gets to the root of the problem, which was, you know, what their parents did in the first place. And, yeah. you know, we, it, it's... It's almost a no-win topic, and frankly, I specialize in those. Yeah, I know. Thank you. But frankly, <laughs> I have I've said this before on this show. With each passing year, it seems to be more and more impossible to have um, a frank discussion with anyone because I think people are so segmented in their views that they they yeah, will not they will not bend. It's it, polarization is a good word. Um, and you get to where you don't want to talk about any of it at all because you're afraid you're, you're going to get your head bitten off. Who cares, off. though? I, mean, who I know, but there are, ta- there are times where you... People care. People why, care. Why let it bother you? Why not just speak your mind? Because people don't like to be disliked for well, what well, their the, views are. But the other Well, the other that's problem. what's happening in Washington. But if you choose None to, of to go, exactly what you what choose to go and make the decisions and cast the votes, and that, then you can't be worried about that. I mean, you, somebody's got to do the heavy lifting. That's why these governors around the country that are slashing their state budgets and laying off state workers and trying to close these budget loopholes, they're, they're saying, look, I'm willing to be a one-term governor because somebody's got to do this. Yeah, somebody's right. make and, and that's what we need now. We need people that will say, I might not get reelected. I don't need to be reelected, but this has got to get done. And the Republican Party and the Democratic Party as parties will not make that choice because they're invested in Although we've Although we've heard Obama say he will, that he, he doesn't care if he's a one-term governor. Yeah, but he's, he's said gonna, a whole lot he's of other things, too. His so, things through, I mean, yeah. come on. But, no, I, I totally get what you're saying. But I, and I think that w- what I was just talking about, this this fear of taking a stand or appearing insensitive or politically incorrect, has infected everyone, not just in Washington, but everywhere. Because, well, you know, they are telling us, you people are going to have to make sacrifices. Isn't that what the Deficit Commission said? You yeah, people yeah, are yes. going to have to make sacrifices. It's never them. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's always us. I, I want to go back to what you know. That's the Marie Antoinette, yeah. uh, you know, King, King Louis so uh, approach to, to the American Here's the sacrifice politics. you need to make. I know you worked really hard and you had beautiful bumper stickers and signs and you got elected. And now you want to be called congressman or congresswoman. Your job is to fix this. And if it makes you stink to high heaven or get thrown out, th- that's part of it. That goes with it. Right. Right. You know, we, we we were talking about having this conversation, and, you know, we talked about being polarized, and I think the problem, Ken, is that we can't have this conversation because for whatever reason, and I hate to go back and keep banging on the media or whatever, we keep putting out these polarizing terms, you know, and so if the tone of the conversation is set by the descriptors laid upon the conversants by yeah. somebody else, you're this, you're that, you're the other thing, well, of course, I'm going to my back's against the wall, and I'm going to come out swinging, and that's why we're not going to be able to get this, uh, you know, this uh, conversation going because Jack or myself believes that the Dream Act is an open is an, is a backdoor uh, uh, entry to amnesty doesn't make us racist or intolerant or or wanting to deny people opportunity. It's just our take but on the situation. But you have to stop situation. caring about whether they think that. I, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. The Republican Party's problem is it, it, they, they, always, be liked. they always recoil from that kind of criticism, and that's what makes them an echo of the Democratic no, Party. No, absolutely. They are unwilling, whether it's budget, taxes, uh, immigration, they are unwilling to do things that will earn them those brickbats. The irony is they get them anyway. You know, Look at all this pandering they do, and they still get called the party of the rich. When are they going to give up and just say, fine, we're the party of the rich, <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, exactly. we're, we're the party of the rich, but oh, by well, the way, 
like most of the money for the that came to support your guy came from wealthy, you know, yeah. wealthy it's just, liberals. It's, okay? it's, a, it's such a tired argument, and we need to get past it. We do need exactly. to get past yeah. it. 1056 on KTSA. By the way, I want to tell you guys, I can see this behind you through the plate glass windows of the dealership. A steady stream of cars uh, pulling up, people dropping off donations. You can be a part of that. We're at 281 in Tacoma at Northside Ford. You don't even have to get out of the car. I mean, you can. We'd love to see you. Uh, but if you want to just pull up at the curb, there are people that will take uh, the bag of gift items or the, your cash donation or a check you've written. Um, by the way, make the check out to Family Service Association. And uh, this all goes to support Rappin' with Jack. And you guys who have been at the event before know that uh, we have a large group of people. But this year what we're worried about is not enough uh, items for them to wrap. So really important that you come out and support this today. Uh, this is uh, the final few days of making a donation before Tuesday night's event, which is presented by Helen's Money Team with network funding. More Jack Riccardi Show and Gang of Four coming up on KTSA. Mostly sunny, already up to 62. I'm Karen Klaus. News headlines coming up at 1120 on 550 KTSA. Okay. I have I have Raul Castillo here from uh, Safe Light Auto Glass, and uh, you're, you're partnering with State Farm. And Raul, you know, you were telling me that at the over 130 State Farm uh, offices where they're accepting gift donations. Things have been going pretty well. Is that right? That's, yes, that's exactly right. It's well over what we did last year. Now, that's impressive, and that's important to note because, obviously, in the nonprofit world, um, most people are saying about most things, whether it's cash or gift uh, donations, these, this is a rough year. So this is impressive that the State Farm drop-off locations are really doing well. It's very impressive. Not only the fact that because it's a down year, but because people are actually taking time yeah. at their own day to go buy a toy and actually drop one off at the office. So you know what I think helps, though, is that State Farm is everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm now making a mental note as I drive around. And, I mean, literally... You just see them everywhere. Every strip center has one, and, and, and almost all of them are participating. And uh, for folks that, that are uh, interested in doing this, we're going to be taking these donations, I think, right right up to the 14th, right? That's correct. Yeah, we've actually, because of logistics, we've actually started picking up some of the toys right. today from some of the locations. Right. Uh, but our last day of pickup is going to be on Tuesday. So we'll so, be collecting right up until the party. The right party. up until the rampant event. That's great. Now, today we want people to come out because they can make the donations here at Northside Ford, and they can sign up to win these uh, Cowboys Redskins tickets. That's a hot that's a hot item. It's hotter than it used to be, yeah. Cowboys yeah, I mean, are a little bit thank of a, goodness of they're winning, streak, right? Yeah. Um, because you know what's going to happen. The, the second place person was going to get four tickets. Uh, no, that's <laughs> just a joke. All right, so so they're winning. Kitten has got the team, uh, you know, moving again. Jason Garrett, a lot of excitement. Um, and even if there wasn't, frankly, look, you're going to go see one of the, you know, wonders of the modern world in that stadium. That's exactly it. The stadium is magnificent. And you're going to have a great time. We're going to put you up for a night. We're going to give you a gas card. That's right. Um, and if, if people have seen the price of gas today, that gas card may be the best part of this whole deal. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, all you have to do is, is you, and, and all you have to do is stop by. I've even seen you signing people up out at the curbside. You'll even do that for That's them, That's exactly right? what we're doing, yeah. Come on by. If you're tight on time on the lunch hour, pick up something real quick. Yeah. We'll take it right, at, right outside the door. So we'll take your donation, sign you up for the Cowboys tickets at curbside, or you can come in and see Gang of Four and say hello on the radio. And um, we're going to draw for these uh, tickets on Tuesday night, right? That's correct, yeah. Are you going to draw? Are you going to be the one that reaches in and... No, I think we'll get Jack to do that. Oh no, I don't know if I can be. I don't know if I can be trusted. Um, now, are we also going to sign people up on Tuesday night? Yes, we'll be signing people up until seven o'clock. Just in the early Eight part of the show, yes. yes so sir. just in the early part of the show Tuesday night, you'll also be able to sign. But if I were you, I'd get out here today and make sure my name is in the hopper and and make your donation today. And you know the beauty of it is, if you drop off a gift item today. You're, you're done. You've done it. You don't have it hanging over you this weekend. It's not on your to-do list. Knock it out right now. In fact, as you drive to Northside Ford, you've got to go by Target, and, and there's a Walmart, and there's Walgreens, and there's all these stores right in this area. So if you're in the neighborhood of Northside Ford, you could make a, sp a spur-of-the-moment uh, decision to donate right now. Yeah, Northside Ford conveniently located to, to make that possible. Absolutely. Here are some people dropping off. Uh, oh, look, this is one of our one of our longtime listeners. He's at our Riccardi parties all the time. He's making a gift donation. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well, Thank you so much for doing that. What have you got there? Is that a toy? It's an Elmo toy. An Elmo toy. That's Taylor's favorite. That's fa Elmo Taylor's toy. favorite toy. How about that? It's yeah. <laughs> Very good. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for doing that. See, it's working already, Raul. It is. 